so when we're using CAD works, what we're trying to do is export out a no touch ISO uh, from the model. Uh, and as intelligent as uh, CAD works is, you still have to tell Isogen to put things in a certain way. Uh, one of those things is uh, flow arrows. Uh, CADWorks doesn't know which way your flow is going, uh, so you have to manually put in flow arrows in order to tell uh, the software you know, which way the flow is going. Uh, another thing is maybe insulation for like personal protection or uh, an, uh, an instrument. Uh, if your CAD administrator hasn't built that into the spec, uh, you have to, there's ways that you can tell Isogen that, hey, there's a, a instrument here, a PI or a PIT or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, inside the line. So uh, let's get into how do you put that inside of your, your model. So we have our um, regular model here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tell CADWorks uh, and Isogen, you know, which way the flow arrow is. So we're going to zoom in on this pipe, okay, and right up here uh, in the ribbons, uh, in 2018, uh, we're using 2019, uh, 2020 is the same, 2022 is a little bit different. Um, and I'll try to get a screenshot uh, for that and, and show you what 22 looks like, uh, but we're not using it, so, um, you know, I've just seen the changes. So if we click on right here, Isogen Supplemental, um, it should come up with a dialog box. There it is. And so you have some options here. Now, all this information is stored in this uh, DAT file, this DAT file. And you can go in here and, and make changes um, to the pipe alt uh, DAT file. Uh, unless you're a little bit more advanced and you don't mind messing things up, um, I, I wouldn't touch it um, very much. Um, there's some little tricks in there, and that's not what this video is about. So, um, so we're going to go into flow arrow. There's small, medium, and large. And really don't know why they're small, medium, and large is in here. It does not make a difference in Isogen. Um, they are smaller, medium, I mean, they are smaller and larger inside of CADWorks, but even the large one's kind of small. So uh, I'll show you a trick that I usually do and I tell my designers to do. So we're going to go to large and we're going to hit OK. And uh, by default, the, D, uh, the DAT file basically turns off the snaps, uh, so it doesn't allow you to, to place it on snaps. Um, you know, once you're done with the command, it turns your snaps back on, but while you're in this command, it's off. So you have to basically uh, do a shift and right click and bring up your snaps. And we're going to go to middle, and we're going to pick the middle of this pipe. Okay. We pick it, and then we have this arrow or this um, uh, you know line that comes out from the arrow. And if we zoom in, there's nothing there right now. Uh, but basically, what it's saying is give it a direction that you want to. And if you follow the prompts down here, uh, it'll tell you basically that too. So we're going to pull this way. Our flow is going to go this way. And then it puts this flow arrow in here. Now, as you can tell, it's very, very small. And so what I have always instructed my designers to do um, is scale this, make it bigger. Uh, so just do a scale, um, select it, grab the endpoint, select it, uh, bring it up. And depending on the size of the diameter of the pipe, Sometimes I do a five times scale, and sometimes I use a ten times scale. Um, so we're going to see what a ten times looks like, and you can see that it's it's a little easier to see, uh, even zoomed down a little bit. Now, one problem comes about is if you move this line, the arrow doesn't come along with it. 
so what I usually do also is I do a group and we're going to select the pipe and the, the uh, flow arrow and we're going to group them two together. So another item that you can put in here uh, is the um, instrument bubble. Uh, you have a couple of different options. You got two levels, you got three levels, um, you got a local instrument, you've got um, you know the primary instrument with a line through it. Um, and so you've got like three different options. Uh, so if your CAD administrator has not put this into the spec editor, uh, then you can go ahead and add this and on the ISO it'll say hey there's a PI here. So we're going to hit OK and uh, the instrument is UCS dependent. Uh, you can only draw in the X and Y plane. It will not allow you to draw in the Z. So if we click here and we wanted to go up, uh, there's just no way that you can go up. So you've got to change your UCS first. So if we just click on a UCS, drag up, we're going to make Y as, you know, the Z. And then we're going to come back over here and go ahead and place our PI. So we're going to come up and I usually give it a dimension of like one inch. Okay. And then it says, you know, what is the first level? So we're going to say this is the instrument type. So we're going to say PI. Okay. And enter and then whatever the the loop number is you know or so we're gonna say uh, you know I don't know uh, one 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 and we're gonna hit OK now you can see that it's kinda small uh, again it's okay to scale this so we're gonna scale this come over here and we're gonna scale it you know five times so it does make it a little bit bigger to see. So now you can grab it, grab the endpoint, come over here. Here's our little, um, oop, did not mean to rotate that. Uh, here's our, um, you know, root valve here. So we're going to put it right at the endpoint uh, of the center line. And that's very important. So if you click on the endpoint, uh, you can see our PI right here. We're going to rotate this around just a little bit better, so a little bit more so you can see it. And so now you can see the PI that's coming off the top of it. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you might want to use is uh, your insulation mark. Um, typically, this is for um, personal protection because it will put in uh, a dimension at where you want, where you place it. Uh, so if we go here and let's say we wanted, let's just say, we're going to say nearest, and we'll put it right here. Okay, again, the UCS is dependent on the insulation. So we're going to delete that. We're going to reset our UCS because this time we actually want to go in the uh, flat plane. And we're going to go here and go insulation. We're going to go nearest. And there we go. We've placed our insulation. So now we've told CADWorks uh, to put these in here for isogen. So let's go ahead and run this this line. So this is 1407 and we're going to go IGB and so we're looking for 147 there it is right there and we're going to hit OK. And we're going to let this run Isogen out. There's our 14.7 ISO. And we're going to go right here. Okay. So now you see that we have a flow arrow. We're saying, hey, the flow is coming this way. Here's our insulation mark. And basically, we're, it's saying, hey, it's 16, the insulation runs 16 foot 
this way. Um, if you wanted it to kind of go the other way, then you could rotate it around if you needed to. Uh, and then here's our PI. Here's PI 1111. Um, and so that uh, allows you to put notes and stuff inside of CADWorks uh, for Isogen to see. So, three, two, one. So I hope this video has helped you uh, understand a little bit about Isogen and CADWorks uh, and the Isogen supplementals. Uh, some of the items that you can uh, go in there and place to help you speed up your uh, design. And um, no, no, I was looking at that, not that. So, okay, three, two, one. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about Isogen supplementals. Um, you know, and what you can put in there and kind of help speed up your, your isogen, uh, or your design inside of your model, uh, and not have to, you know, wait around for your, uh, CAD administrator, put the information in there. So, uh, please, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, let us know what you'd like to see.